This is a video on how to make a fabric dust jacket that is very simple. I am very much a novice when it comes to sewing, so be assured, so long as you can sew following a line, you can do this. In a moment, I will go through what you will need, but first, I'd like to explain why you might want one. I made one initially because I have lots of nice hardback books with dust jackets on. I always find that this is a problem because I really like some of the dust jackets, but if you start lugging a book around with it on, it more often than not can get damaged. So for years, excluding library books that come with plastic ones on, I've been taking the dust jackets off books when I read them. However, then the hardcovers underneath became scuffed, and now that they're more and more pretty foiled ones, I decided I had enough, they needed to be protected, and would need another dust jacket. At this point, I decided a fabric one would be the best idea. Firstly, they are longer lasting than if I use paper. They are washable and there are loads of great prints out there. The design I made is very similar to the plastic dust jackets you will find on paperbacks at libraries. It will fit most book designs, including paperbacks, hardbacks and even notebooks if you want. You just need to measure them. I've included my measurements for this one, but you'll need to measure your chosen book to get the most accurate fit for your own cover. Anyway, let's get on to what you will need. Step one, what you will need. A book that you want to cover, sharp scissors, a sewing needle, though you can also use a sewing machine, thread, ideally in a color to match your fabric, a measuring tape, a sewing pencil or chalk to mark out the pattern on your fabric, pins, elastic, there is no specific width, and most importantly, two pieces of fabric. You could do two pattern sides if you wanted, but I've chosen to do plain fabric for the inside. You can also add some ribbon to add in a built-in bookmark. You want to make sure you seal the ends of the ribbon so it doesn't fray. You can either do this by melting the edges or folding it over and sewing it. Step two, preparation. You will need to measure your fabric. The easiest way to do this for a hardback is to measure the existing dust jacket. The book I'm using is a small hardback. Its measurements are 25.5 centimeters down and 55.5 centimeters long. I'm actually going to make it a little longer so that it will fit thicker books as well as this one. If your book doesn't have a dust jacket, you can also measure it by the size of the cover. So it would be the front cover, spine, back cover, plus roughly another 20 centimeters in length so that you will have 10 centimeters flaps that will go around the book. After you've worked out your measurements, you want to draw the rectangle on one of your pieces of fabric. I've done it on the backing fabric as it's easier to see on plain fabric than on patterned fabric. Once you have done this, you want to pin the two pieces of fabric together, making sure that you have the back of the fabric showing rather than the front of it then trim any excess. You want a seam allowance of at least 1.5 centimeters. Now you want to work out where the elastic will be holding the one flap down. Mine is roughly at 19.5 centimeters away from the right edge. Then you can also pin in your ribbon marker. Mine is 29 centimeters away from the left edge. You want it somewhere roughly over the spine. Step three, sew it together. Now that the fabric and elastic are pinned together, you are going to sew along most of the lines you marked out. Running stitch, the most basic stitch, is fine for this, though you want to make sure you keep your stitches short for strength. Or like me, you can use a sewing machine. Sew nearly all the way around, though you want to leave a five centimeter gap so you can turn the fabric to the right side. Step four, trim, press, and sew. At this point, you want to trim your seam allowances a bit closer, especially if you did them quite wide like I did. You also want to clip the corners a little closer so that they are sort of like a triangle inwards. Doing this will help you get nice pointy corners. Once you've done this, turn the fabric the right side out. You may want to use a pencil or a piece of wire to poke out the corners a bit. It's a good idea here to iron the dust jacket so that the seams are pressed which will make the next part much easier. After that you want to sew up the gap. Again, running stitch is fine. At this point, you can see I've actually done this upside down, but the plus point is it doesn't matter which way the sealed flap is. So in this case, it will be at the back of the book. Traditionally, it is at the front of the book, but it won't affect it either way. Plus, I've somehow sewn in my elastic a little bit wonky, but again, this isn't a problem. So don't worry about it being perfect. Step five, making flaps. 
The final part is making the sealed flap that will help keep the dust jacket on. The other flap will fold over and be slipped under the elastic, which means it will fit more than one book. If you really want, you could do two sealed flaps, but it would be limited to just the book you are making or ones of a very similar page count that it would fit. To make the flap, fold over the fabric. My flap here is 9cm. You can press the fabric with an iron to make your life a little bit easier. Then you want to sew along the top and the bottom with running stitch again. I've sewn just the plain fabrics together so the stitches are hidden. You want to get them right at the top so it will fit your book closely. Step 6. You are all done and now you can put it on your book. As you can see it is back to front though you can't really tell once the book is past the first page when it's open. Closed it isn't noticeable at all. So I hope that helps and you enjoy your new fabric dust jacket if you make one.